Hello everyone, Steve here with my latest 3D printed clock. This is a battery powered pendulum drive clock. It runs off of two AA batteries. Uh, as far as I can tell, it probably should run for at least six months on a set of batteries. The, the electronics inside it is from a cheap pendulum drive unit. These things are often listed uh, with a label called quartz pendulum drive but in reality, the only quartz part is the clock movement that this thing sits around. And this is designed to fit around that movement and drive a pendulum. One of the requirements when designing this clock was I wanted it to have a second hand with 60 ticks per minute. A pendulum just under 10 inches long is a one half second pendulum. So the height from the pendulum mounting point to the bottom of the clock needed to be about 12 inches to give room to, for the pendulum bob to be able to be adjusted up and down. Uh, it ends up being quite a bit larger compared to my smaller desk clock. The desk clock can be printed on a Prusa Mini. The pendulum drive clock needs to be printed on a larger printer. Uh, the dial is an 8-inch circle, so that pretty much sets a little bit over 200 millimeter square build area. Uh, the frame is segmented here, and also the back frame is in two pieces, so that if you can print the dial, you can print the rest of the clock. The time can be set using a knob at the back. It has a an interesting characteristic. When you go backwards, you can't, you can't wind the ratchet backwards, but when you go forwards, it will move the second hand, it will move the second hand ratchet around with it, um, but it's still changing the time, just like before, it's just that the second hand happens to rotate with it. The time can be adjusted by turning that screw, which raises and lowers the bob. If I hold it for just a second, there's an inch and a half or so of movement on the bob to lengthen and shorten the, the pendulum. The electronics in this clock are really simple. Basically, I scavenge the, the magnet out of the, the pendulum on this unit and then open up the, the compartment and inside inside is just a small circuit board with two transistors, three capacitors, two resistors, and a coil. And then ultimately there will be a magnet that will be used and the, the circuit senses when the magnet passes over the coil and then that gives the pendulum a push and then was, when the magnet comes back it pushes it again. That's what provides the movement for this clock. And this is normally designed for a pendulum to just free swing back and forth. You know, it can have any length pendulum onto it, but there's, there's no friction other than the friction at the pivot point. Uh, what's interesting is when it was turned into a clock, there's two pawls. There's an active pawl and a static pawl. And there's just enough friction in those two pawls that the, the clock will, will not run on a single battery. And so what I have to do is run it on two AA batteries. And so the only soldering that's required to put this clock together is to cut these battery clips, solder on a little extension wire so that the terminals are far enough apart to run two batteries. This is actually just a prototype, although I would say it's at least 90% completed. There's still a few things that I'd like to to fine tune before it's ready to be released. 
the, the primary things I need to work on is the spacing of the ratchet and the pawls. Uh, I'm not completely happy with the, the positioning of those. Uh, part of that was due to when I built the, the complete clock, the ratchet was just was too heavy. It had so much inertia that when the pendulum pushed it, it would run an extra click. Uh, it helped a lot when I lightened the, the ratchet. Uh, it actually seems like it makes the clock run with a slightly less, less energy, makes it run better. Uh, but when it was made thinner, I, now I need to adjust the positioning and thicknesses of some of the gears. I still need to make a few adjustments on some of the thicknesses and heights. Um, basically just another round of fine tuning some of the parts. But this design should be released on my mini factory maybe sometime in January of 2022.